Rob, the, 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 the Euro has been really – it's been great, but it's disappointing in a sense that on the one side you do it. Well, it, it's good and bad. You, you've got you, you've got Germany, Spain. You've got France, Portugal. You've got the four heavyweights there on that one side. It's disappointing that these matches worthy of a final all have to take place in the quarterfinal. But at the same time, the fact that you've got these two monster games on Friday is, is really, really good. Hey, at least you got them, right? I mean, you know, as as we've learned through the course of these tournaments, no games are guaranteed. No, you know, marquee headline matchups uh, uh, work out the way you think about it. So at least let's let's let them play and and let them fight it and let them earn it. And you're right, they are they are sexy games, man. They're great great nations, entertaining soccer. It's been. It's been a fun little summer. I know you haven't been getting much sleep. I see you hanging out in the avocado room. I'm like, hang in there, Bear. Hang in there. We only got another game from Copa America coming your way. Um, but it's been a fun tournament if you're a soccer junkie. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sleep when the tournament's over before we exactly. get going there with, with Big Do Kickoff uh, at the end of August for West Virginia. So wait, we're not talking Penn State at West Virginia, right? No, we're, we're, we're not talking okay. James Franklin uh, job okay. status. Is, can Drew Aller make that leap? We're not talking that here. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do that in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll kick it off with the, with the first game Friday, Spain-Germany. Uh, basically, Spain minus 115 to advance, Germany minus 110. Uh, this feels like a match where the winner may win it. You probably have player of the tournament here at stake with, with either Rodri or Ruiz or Jamal uh, for Spain, Musiala Cruz for, for, for Germany. Uh, this is a Spanish side of which has looked like the best uh, team in the tournament so far. They've conceded multiple goals just twice in the, in the last year and a half. Um, I like Spain to advance. That's my bet here. Spain minus 115. They're, they're, they were my pick when we did our little uh, our, our little sheet there in the uh, in the avocado room. But um, it, it, it's probably it's going to be a tough ask with the home crowd being all over Germany. But I do like Spain to advance here. I think they're overall yeah, they're a better team. That's the thing, like, you know, how much do you factor in for home field advantage? Um, and I think you could say the same for Turkey a as well when we get to that point a little bit later. And, um, you know, having this groundswell of, of emotion and energy from the home country, from the host country, it's incredibly valuable. Um, and it, you're almost like master of the obvious when you say it, but you still feel like you need to remind people. I mean, we go back to 1994 and look what the U.S. did on on home soil. You know, when you get that whole country behind you and the energy that is there. And you know, Germany's had a rough go of things national team wise as of late. And they needed something positive. And, and now they got some dude in the, the middle of every square in Germany blaring that saxophone and, and everybody's going. Um, I kind of like Germany to keep it going. I think they I think that might be the end of the road. You know, because you can only tap into that vein so often and, and it's going to going to give you another pint of blood. But um, as well as Spain has played, somehow I think this this home field energy just pushes Germany over the finish line one more time. Have we confirmed that the uh, saxophone player is not uh, Landon Donovan or uh, Ian Dark? Can we confirm that? It's a bit, he's got like, is it, is it me or does he have like a cigarette behind his ear as well, which is part of like this amazing <laughs> decor. Um, and I'm a big Yacht Rock guy. So yes. saxophone is always in Yacht Rock. So, I'm, so there's like this natural bond between me and this saxophone dude. Um, and he's he's banging out songs that I dig as well. It's such a cool, cool thing. And, you know, it's funny. It, it, that whole, I can't believe we're talking about a, a German guy playing a saxophone right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, it has me thinking about World Cup 26 and everything that we're doing this summer is kind of, mm -hmm. you know, gearing towards, you know, Canada, U.S., Mexico hosting the World Cup. And I hope I see these scenes, you know, in, in the United States. It's just it, it's hard to imagine in some of these places because the stadiums are, are not so close to the city centers, if you will. And, and the, the public transportation to get there isn't like it is in, in Europe. Um I don't know if we're going to get those scenes in the United States, but you know, like the German saxophone dude taking over Times Square in 2026, <laughs> that is that would probably make me the happiest man on earth. Can we can we agree that Michael McDonald is the official vocalist oh, of Yacht Rock? Michael McDonald. It, do you remember the old SCTV skit 
Oh, yeah. This is going way, way back mm-hmm. where they're do- they're banging out. I can't remember if it was like a Kenny Loggins or it was some like Yacht Rock song. And it's all it is is following Michael McDonald through the course <laughs> of the day while the recording's going on. And he comes running in the studio to sing his little line. And then out of the studio he goes. Yeah, Dude, that, that's, that's, that's the great player. thing. Because he got him with the Doobie Brothers. And then like he has all these little cameos with other artists, which makes it so fantastic. You're like, oh, you know, there's a sneak little Michael McDonald appearance. Yeah. Now. Uh, so Alexi Lawless and I, we drive in to work together um, quite often. And we're both kind of music nerds. And we both... Like we both really like heavy metal stuff. Like mm-hmm. like when Def Leppard comes on, it's like turn it up to eleven. Um, but Yacht Rock will come on, and we both just you know it's kind of like you look at each other. We're like yeah, we're going to keep it here, and we always start doing some weird deep dives on these Yacht Rock bands and these artists. Like who is this guy? What are they? Where do they come from? And I guarantee you, every time we drive, I'm like, is that? Did I just hear Michael McDonald? And they're like, I think that it was Michael McDonald. Like, I didn't even know he was in that song, too. Wow, German saxophone and yacht rock. We have gone off the rails. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so I'll, I'll try and take take it back on the rails here. Uh, I, was look, I was looking at player of the tournament odds today, and if Germany were to win, uh, I think – it's probably a two-man vote between Musiala and Tony Kroos. Like, do you think because of this being deemed as a Tony Kroos farewell tour, that even though Musiala has been fantastic and have been such so involved in all these goals, do you think this might be a default? We'll give Musiala outstanding young player of the tournament and give Kroos player of the tournament. I mean, it, it's hard to do because Musiala has been so good, but I kind of sense that this might be one of those like lifetime achievement awards here for Chris. Yeah. Well, it's like those retirement tours, right? You know, like um, the, the voters do kind of hedge their bets sometimes, you know, and, and you're right. It, it does become a bit of a lifetime achievement award, but I think also what Musiala has done has been, you know, so obvious and so blatant that it's hard to, hard to overlook it. Um, but they have an out, as you mentioned, right? Here's the out. You can be, you can be honored. You can be honored. Everybody can be honored. It becomes like an Oprah show. Um, and <laughs> you get a fifth and you get yes. a gift and you get so, yeah I, I i as someone who has a musiala ticket i'm hoping that's not the case but i'm uh i'm fearing i'm fearing the worst so how uh, many tickets do you have right lot. now for your a lot a lot i don't like, know what a lot is is a lot well, 50 100 200 um let's i have let's let's, let's see I, I can quickly uh six ten 15, 25. I got about 30 different things that involve like name the finalists, golden okay. boot, player of the tournament, uh, assists, uh, outright wins. Yeah, they're, they're about 20, 25 different, different permutations. What about, what about for the Copa? Copa, I don't have as many. Okay. Uh, Copa, I would say, let's see, three, five. This is this is great, by the way, people. Uh, I, only, I only have I only have seven. For, Should we talk uh, about our fantasy football teams next? Uh, we we could do that if if you'd like. The, no, the, the one, no. The one Copa bet that I, that I made that I found, and it, it was ridiculous. Was there you could you could bet you'd have to lay a big number that there would be no first time winner. Uh, yes or yes or no? Would there be a first time winner in Copa? And like the no was not best bet, bet uh, priced accordingly. Like I'm like one of these top four choices are going to win for like, sure. We're not going to have a first time winner. So like that was that, that was one of those lay a lot to win a little type bets. But yeah, uh, I, I, feel, I feel good about that. One. So you don't believe in Panama? That's what you're telling me. I, I, I do not believe I do not believe in Panama. And unfortunately, getting the uh, the three wins necessary to complete this this magical <laughs> run. Uh, Steering it back to uh to Euro, we, we really circumvented. We went like the the Big Ben Parliament way around the loop there. Uh, the the other match on Friday, uh, Portugal France uh, France minus one forty five to advance. Portugal plus one fifteen. This one has under for me written all over it. If you look at France, uh, five of their last seven Euro matches have ended in a draw. They've kept clean sheets five of their last six. Uh, Portugal hasn't scored in 210 minutes since putting three on the board against Turkey. Uh, France has only got the two on goals and the Mbappe kicked from the spot. Uh, 
Rabio being out, I wonder if that might change the dynamic a little bit. You bring Kamavinga in now, I would assume. But it, it just seems like, and I was joking in the in the room the other day with, with, with Jules and, and Peter and uh, <clears throat> and Daniel in there, like this is like every single Deschamps knockout match round uh, game. It, it looks it look it looked like the match was right there, right there for for for, for France to be had and beaten. And there they go. Ball goes off a defender, own goal. They win one nil. So I'm going to play one nil France. I'm going to play two nil France uh, as my bet here. Uh, I just wonder if Portugal's kind of been figured out because I know the one match uh, where they did lose to Georgia, they they didn't have their what they had ten subs in that game. But the match before that, and then the match uh, in in the knockout round where they were fortunate to get by as well. Uh, I think they're run ends here. I'm going to go one nil France, two nil France at a price. So you're, you're telling me France is like Rasputin right now. You, you can't kill them. <laughs> you can't get rid of them. Um, I see both of those nations as slightly underachieving. And I think France more like major underachieving so far. Um, you know, Ronaldo, his struggles, and then the emotion we saw from him when he missed that penalty kick in the last round that would have won it for them um, eventually he did step up when it went to penalty kicks and converted a beautiful finish. But, you know, I wonder where his, his head is right now because he knows it's kind of last call, certainly last call at the Euros. Hopefully we get him in two more years at the world cup. But um, I think he's feeling, feeling some pressure, feeling, you know, like the story is starting to come to a close and, and it's impacting him. And I don't know, that could be a positive or a negative. I, I don't know where he's going to go with that. Typically, I think it's a positive, but like for him to to be on the field like sobbing, not just like kind of bummed and mad, broken down, like a broken down human being, um, alarmed me. Um, it also showed he's human, by the way. You know, those abs are, are actually created. Um, and France, you just keep expecting more from them. You know, they're they're a brand. Right. It's kind of like Brazil, the Copa, when we get there, they're a brand. And you're like, well, just because they've done this, this and this, they're still France. They're going to be better. They're going to show the real France eventually. And Mbappe is going to have that game where you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. He is the best player on the planet right now. So I, I like the slow burn method at these tournaments, at a World Cup, at a Euro um, and I think for France, it has been a slow burn, but I think it's time to ignite. And I, I think they do come alive. I don't think this one is is as low scoring as you think. I think okay. both teams come out flying, and I think it's an early goal that kind of sets that tone. Well, that would be great. We, we, I, I'd be all for that just to get a little yeah. excited.